Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Vertigo To Go by Brendan Booth Jones. So this is a poetry collection, and as such, it doesn't really have a blurb for me to read out. Um, but having said that, with poetry, I genuinely find, generally find, sorry, that uh, the best thing to do is just to uh, read some of the poems out to you. I will say it's a very beautiful little book. It's also split into sections as well. Um, so section one is Whip It. And I wanted to read the first poem in this, Ashley. Our 15 year old hands cut it from a plastic coke bottle, spray painted it blue and fitted it with tin foil. We named our homemade bong Pandora. Thick white smoke straight into our blood in Ashley's garage on Saturday nights. Feeling like suburban teenage soothsayers. We, gro we grieved to Hendrix. We raged to Cobain. Then we laid back on neon bean bags and the space between each thought stretched out like cosmic toffee. And with blood-struck eyes we gazed through dust-addicted cobwebs, ragged and abandoned in the rafters, to the luminous, tantalising future, pinned like a shiny silver ring to the nipple of the world. But I grew up and fled that two-stroke town, lost touch with that boy and that vision of a world without justice. And now I wonder, where is Ash? I asked around, tried to find a contact number or Facebook account, but all I found, another memory long buried in pubescent wreckage of ecstasy, Purple haze, ninja turtles and bad grades, memory rising like a pimple, small and painful, of his voice in that damp garage saying, since my dad died I feel I'm breaking apart. And I had been too busy riding the radiant final wave of innocence behind my eyes to see his hands shaking. So we're going to skip into the section called Vertigo. And this poem is called West Meadow for Ella. At a bath worthy party trying to avoid those who put the harm in charm we found each other. The night had seemed destined to drag like bad acid, but you turned it like a volta. You led me by your silken perfume compass and half a bottle of flat champagne away from the seasick slurring ferris wheel of fun to the fragrant emptiness of the west meadow where you graced the star silvered heather and my eyes with your presence. But finally alone, without the fuzzy crutch of drunken hubbub, our chromosomes twisted our tongues in knots. My lips issued one misprint after a mother at the peak of my awkwardness, not knowing what to do with my hands, I high-fived a nearby rosebush. And your laugh was a glittering rivulet, and you kissed my dough-damp hand, and our energy shimmered and rippled, and we danced beneath the genderless stars that swayed like drunk angels over the moon-washed midnight meadow. And this is Autumn in Amsterdam for Danielle and Shirelle, and uh, I love Amsterdam, it's one of my favourite cities in the world. We picnic near the pond in Vondel Park. The light does its best impressionist impression. Day saunters into dusk. Ducks dab for morsels in the soup-thick water. Your feet curl up behind you, and to the sole of one shoe is stuck a grey plug of gum jewelled with a little rusted fishing hook and a tiny reel of hair. As if the world were trying to hook you, to stop you floating away forever, down the burning river of sky draining gold in the west. And I lay there beside you thinking up these ridiculous lines and others that I will never publish. Such as how your eyes sparkle like endorphins and your lips gleam like dolphins and so on. While you fumble with an outrageously expensive kiwi fruit and I visit each island in the archipelago of freckles on your arm with a kiss. Now the evening air is perfumed with dew and the dank stink of weed and tourists tumble bug-eyed through golden leaves but nature senses a coming death. And summer is a husk among the empty cans and pizza crusts. So why can we never return to the freshness of unknowing? The North Sea breathes her fishy frigid breath. Another season of excess moulds in the rubble. And this scene will soon be drained of colour. So come closer and let's push the end of the poem back a little further. So this is part four, Scythe, and we have a quote. We have a quote at the front of all of the different parts. But the quote at the front of this one is from Isabel Kenyon, who runs Fly on the Wall Poetry Press. A lethal light I orbit the depths, my blind fishes and I. So this poem is called Iceberg for Sierra. I limped away from you along the motorway and crossed the bridge over the Amstel River. Fenced in by winter's black corrugated iron trees, the city was a cemetery of high-rise headstones. These backwater outskirts of Amsterdam ached beneath a sky grey and bright as bones under x-ray. Ants held an orgy in a rotten half rat, half squished into the print of a bicycle track. Trucks thundered past like elephants on meth. And my tendons were taut from the stress of our syntax. After we'd carved our tongues into daggers, I cut up the tea cosy of your confidence and you stabbed me in the leg of my hope. I stopped and stepped up to peer over the rail, as if looking out over the murky, tweed brown sheen of my life. Close my eyes and my head starts spinning. Keep them open, keep them, 
and down below me on the river drifted a long steel barge, like an oil-smudged and armor-plated iceberg, carrying huge yellow mounds of sand, enough to fake a beach. And isn't that how we lost our way, drifting further and further from home, looking downstream over each other's shoulders to the next tantalizing bend, hoarding idealistic piles of dirty blonde hope for a better life in some unknown harbor. Seagulls bickered overhead over bread. The black latticework of forest stood unmoved. Then the blue howl of a police siren rinsed through me like detergent. I slowly raised my hands to wave the industrial barge and the bitter grit of its burden goodbye as it passed under the bridge on its course to someone else's horizon. And here we have at the site of the crash. All is thunderingly still. The street, trees and houses lie curled asleep in the pre-dawn chill. Silence hangs heavy as extinction, but one truck wheel still spins. We are first on the scene. The truck must have swerved to dodge a cat, caught the curb at high speed and flipped in slow motion. To crunch and buckle upside down into the stop sign and then the wall of the dentist's office. Telephone wires smoking and tangled like a toxic jellyfish. Hands shaking, you rush back to the car and call 911. I am frozen before the wreckage. Somebody's son, somebody's somebody. Blood coats the steering wheel, blood on the Bible, blood on history. A man sighed by the half-sunk sickle of his belt. A body wrapped by impact and glass. He is dead. He is dead. How thin is this veil of living? These lamp-lit quiet suburban streets stretch like frail skin over the swirling sewers of darkness. Oh, stop turning this into a poem. Stop turning. Please make this stop. Stop the bird's incandescent songs of waking. Stop the dawn shaking rose-fresh petals of exquisite red skyward. Stop the first morning walkers who gather to gawk. Finally, a siren fills the air with its screech. Somebody's son, brother, father, lover, split apart and wasted. From eye to synapse to psyche, the image is coded into language. From paper to pixel to data, dissolved in the digital bloodstream and forgotten. Except by the vast unconscious. The shock of the blooming red skull. The face a crumpled page emptied of narrative and dangling from the cracked dashboard the blood spattered picture of a little boy so yeah uh, i enjoyed vertigo to go uh, you can probably judge for yourself whether you're going to enjoy the poetry style but i personally uh thought it's probably one of the better poetry books i've read this year i'd give it somewhere between a 3.75 maybe a four out of five i actually really like this um the cover photo as well i think it's quite a clever like reflection of the contents without being too literal as well so um so there's that and overall as i say i have enjoyed it and uh would probably recommend so yeah vertigo to go by brendan booth jones so there you have it that's what i thought of vertigo to go as always don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this if you liked this book or the poems that i read from it uh hit the subscribe button for more and i'll see you soon for another bookish video thanks a lot bye bye i think we got the outro right then i don't know